already got one. Ah! No way. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. No okay. way. You ready? Yeah. Here we go. Wow. Oh, yes. For most of my wildlife adventures, I'm usually looking for live animals, but today's a little bit different. We've come here to go in search of evidence of a marine animal that lived here 50 million years ago. Sharks! Welcome to Hearn Bay. To many, this is a pretty windy seaside town on the coast of Kent, but to us, this is one of the best places in the UK to find fossilised shark's teeth. Right, okay everyone, let's get fossil hunting. We've come to the beach at low tide, that's when the tide is far out, so we can walk to the best places to find fossils, but that doesn't mean this is going to be easy. Well, the thing is, is that fossilised shark's teeth are dark, really dark, almost black. And um, if you look at the ground, you'll notice that there are just an awful lot of black pebbles everywhere. <laughs> so. I mean, that's a muscle. Um, that's a black pebble. What are you saying? It's like finding a needle in a haystack. It is. It's quite hard. <laughs> Here's the deal. It's really windy. Very windy. You might not be able to hear us, but we promise you it's worth it. Just yeah. bear with us, guys. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So we searched and searched and searched some more until... Have you got one? Ah! No way! What? Ah! Shut up! Have you got one? Wait, wait, wait! Okay, I'm not a hundred percent sure. Look at this. What do you think? I mean, it looks pretty good. Really? <laughs> ah! Yay! Okay, we found our first one. Okay, oh, my word. right. This is amazing. I believe I am holding one of our first fossilized shark teeth. That is incredible. It's dark in color. It's really smooth and shiny. And you can see here where once upon a time it would have been attached to the skin and that's what it would have held it in the shark's mouth. But of course, the skin doesn't fossilize in the same way that the teeth do. But there we go. First one. Don't drop it. Don't drop oh, it. Don't drop it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a fossil hunter! <laughs> yeah! Yeah! So why are we finding shark's teeth here? The view didn't always look like this. The fossilised shark teeth that we're looking for today probably came out of a shark's mouth around 50 million years ago. And back then, most of Kent was covered in a warm, shallow sea. Perfect for bull shark and tiger sharks. But what happened was that the sea level dropped, which means that the warm sea receded, and what was the seabed became land. It's hard to imagine all of this being covered with plants and trees that were supporting loads of wildlife, but it was, and as proof, I'm not just finding shark teeth fossils today, I've just found a fossilised twig. Go on, like, just to prove it, try and break that, Greg. Oh no, it's impossible, it's like stone. It is, it's like stone. We say that this has been petrified. This land was called Doggerland, and it wasn't till fairly recent history, around 10,000 years ago, that sea levels rose again, and that water covered the landmass, creating the coastline that we see today. And it's these waters that are slowly churning up the new seabed to reveal the shark's teeth that were dropped 50 million years ago. Greg is still searching for his first shark's teeth, and I'm holding mine. And it's just incredible. Jimmy! What? I've got one! He's found one! <laughs> all right then, all right. I've got one, I've got one. You got one. <laughs> <laughs> I've been searching for so long. All Look right. at that one. Oh my word, look how sharp it is. How cool, huh? It's like got this what? amazing is that this could be 50 million years old. Yeah. Guys, that is so cool. <laughs> I'm so happy. <laughs> Imagine if you hadn't found one. I've literally been scouring every rock for. <laughs> I'm so pleased he found one. I would have, I would not have heard the end of it if he hadn't. 
Right, so I want to try something. Imagine that this is now, and we're going to go back in time. So this tooth could come from a shark that's 50 million years old. But its ancestors, other sharks, actually were swimming in the ocean 450 million years ago. Now, dinosaurs, the big deal of the prehistoric times, they actually first appeared around 230 million years ago. And the first human-like animal, a hominid, about four and a half million years ago. So that means that sharks have actually been around a hundred times longer than hominids, the first human-like animals, and three times longer than dinosaurs. For sharks to be around for so long, they must have been so well adapted to their environment. Can you see here? Is that, a, is that, the, is the, that shark's tooth or is that a bit of? Underneath. This thing, I think that might be one. Shark's tooth. Oh my word it is! Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Switch the lens! You are the master! Now I'm the master. You are the master. I'm the master finder <laughs> of the shark's Sorry, what's that? I'm the master finder. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to change the lens. This place is honestly littered with shark's teeth and there's a reason we're finding so many and that's because sharks get through so many teeth in their lifetime. Because sharks teeth are arranged in rows. The front row of teeth tend to be their biggest and that's called the, they tend to be called the working teeth. And then the row behind are a little bit smaller, the row behind that are even smaller still and so on and so forth. But if they ever lose any of their working teeth, the skin that the teeth are attached to acts a little bit like a conveyor belt and they move the next tooth forward, which means a shark is always gonna have a complete set of gnashes, which is great when they're hunting for food. We were lucky enough to see a white-tipped reef shark scuba diving in Bali at the beginning of the year, and it felt really special to see one and observe some more of their incredible adaptations. They move so gracefully in the water, their bodies are pointed at both ends, which helps them to glide, and they don't use up much energy as they swim as they're lightweight, because sharks have cartilage skeletons instead of heavy bone. And they're also amazingly camouflaged. Most sharks are dark with pale bellies, this hides them from prey. Seen from below, their light bellies match the pale sky, and seen from above, their brown, grey or black backs blend into the depths. Back in Hearn Bay, we're still picking teeth out of the sand, but golden hour is fast approaching. Okay, so the tide is now coming back in, so I think we're having to call our fossil hunting tour close. Yeah, very yeah. successful trip though. How yeah, many did we, we get? have in total, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight shark's teeth and one fossilized twig. Amazing. I'm holding pieces of natural history in my hand, and to think sharks have been around all this time is just incredible. Yeah, it is. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please do subscribe, and then you'll know when the next one's come out. Yeah, stay curious, and we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. And of course, just as we turn the cameras off, Maddie's like, oh, I'll go have a quick look for another one. And what do you find? Another one. And look at this one. The base of this one is really, really wide. It is huge. This is my, my new favorite thing to do ever. I love it so much. You're going to be here every weekend. I could. I, I really enjoy it. Shall I sit? <laughs>